What if you could hold the entire world's data in your hands? Seems impossible, right? Well, I am here today to convince you for the opposite and to share with you some secrets about how this could be achieved. As you probably already know, we are living through the era of digital evolution, where we generate 2.5 quintillion bytes per day, which is the equivalent of 10,000 billion photos that people take with their smartphones. To get a better image of this number, let me tell you that 90% of the world's data has been only generated in the last two years. Another important fact that might come as a shock to you is that 80% of the digital universe is composed by data which is characterized as cold. We use the term cold to describe the digital information, which is very infrequently accessed, but still remains safely stored for security and regulatory compliance reasons. In fact, we are constantly generating such data. Take as an example an old, fo an old photo of yours, one that you uploaded in your social media 10 years ago and have forgotten about it. Or, do you remember that extremely important email you had received by a colleague of yours 20 years ago that said, yes? You don't remember it? Well, believe me when I say that this email still exists somewhere on a, on a database. And we are constantly creating such data. So now, I would like you to take a moment and try to imagine what could be the necessary volume of a data center so as to be capable of storing all the data existing on the internet. But I bet that it's not that simple, right? Also, do you happen to know for how long can digital data be safely stored in conventional storage devices without any loss of information? Approximately 10 to 20 years maximum. So, what if I told you that all of this data can be stored in a shoebox and kept safe for all eternity? You don't believe me, right? Well, let me convince you with the following story. In 2014, scientists have managed to fully recover the DNA of a woolly mammoth that had been trapped into permafrost. Now, there are two interesting facts about this story. To begin with, as you probably already know, DNA is the biological molecule which is responsible for storing all the necessary information for living organisms to survive in a very tiny volume, such as the one of the cells. But what is even more exciting about this story is the fact that this DNA ages back 40,000 years, and it is still decodable, readable. So this is how a great idea was born, to use the molecule of DNA as a storage medium for digital data. But how can we do so? Let's take an example, for example, a photo. Any digital information, such as this picture, is expressed in the form of a binary sequence composed by zeros and ones. On the other hand, the molecule of DNA is composed by four different building blocks, the nucleotides, which we use to denote using the symbols A, T, C, and G. Consequently, the key step for storing digital data into DNA would be to transform the binary sequence of zeros, of zeros and ones into a quaternary encoding of A, T, C, and G. Once encoded into quaternary, the quaternary strands are going to be sent to get synthesized in the form of DNA. Now, at this point, it is important to mention that we are talking about synthetic DNA here. This means that it is chemically synthesized in vitro, in a laboratory, by composing the DNA strands nucleotide by nucleotide. This means that no organism needs to be a donor of their own DNA molecules, as the DNA that we're going to use for the purpose of data storage is artificial. However, it shares the exact same properties as the real DNA, with the only difference that since the nucleotide strand is just some quaternary encoding 
of some digital data, it will not contain genes, and therefore, it cannot produce life. After a synthesis, the DNA is going to get stored into some special tiny capsules, which can keep it safe from contacts with water and oxygen, and can promise reliability for hundreds of years in room temperature. So, until this point, we have done all the necessary work to store all of our digital information into this capsule. Now the question is, how do we read back? To retrieve the content from those capsules, we are going to use some special machines, which are called the sequencers. The sequencer is going to read the DNA content of the capsules and provide us for, with the quaternary code that is stored inside. And by using the inverse process of the encoding, we can retrieve the binary sequence of zeros and ones, and therefore, the digital information which has been stored. It's simple, isn't it? But the most challenging part in this whole process is the fact that the process of DNA sequencing is prone to errors. This means that the encoding algorithm should be very carefully selected so as to provide a robust DNA code. Therefore, the application of error correction techniques could significantly improve the reliability of the decoding. In other words, if one applies an efficient and robust encoding algorithm, which is especially designed so as to handle and reduce the sequencing error, the storage of digital data into DNA is not only feasible, but also very secure and therefore extremely promising. Just imagine that in a theoretical estimation, scientists claim that all of the world's digital data can be stored in a single kilogram of DNA which is about the size of a shoebox. But now, after you know all those technical secrets, let us talk a little bit about the practical part. Could we instantly stop using all these cloud storage and servers that are so easy and convenient for us? For the moment, no. DNA data storage requires the process of DNA synthesis and sequencing, and they both include some very fine and delicate manipulations. Therefore, for the moment, it is a bit difficult to imagine long strands of DNA to be massively produced at a large scale. However, this scenario is something that we can easily visualize at a range of five to ten years. So now, I guess you might be wondering, then, what is the whole point of using DNA data storage today? It is, in fact, the storage of this cold data that we discussed about earlier. All this data that, at the first thought, might seem negligible, but if you better think about it, it is not. In fact, we are constantly generating an extreme amount of such data and only a small percentage of this is correctly organized into offline backup tape drives so that it does not occupy much space in online servers. But even backup tapes themselves, they have a limited lifespan, which yields the need for frequently migrating their content into new storage units every five years. So the solution is both expensive in terms of energy and money. DNA data storage could be the key solution to this problem, as it can allow the storage of a great amount of, inform of information without requiring much space or energy. Furthermore, the fact that the data is being kept in such a small and safe container, such as those capsules, makes it easier to protect from any environmental, environmental disaster that big data centers are being exposed to. Just think about how much data has been lost every time that the data center catches fire, how many songs, films, or other data related to our cultural patrimony. So, as you might suspect, this novel, novel storage technology can revolutionize the future. There is only one delicate point to be discussed. 
As DNA data storage is inspired by the magnificent properties of DNA and highly depends on some relatively new biological technologies such as the one of DNA synthesis and sequencing, it is kind of reasonable that those procedures are relatively expensive for the moment. But if you think about the cost of maintaining backups of big server rooms that need to be frequently repaired and replaced, you will see that the total cost over time is at least comparable to storing data into DNA. But if you also think back to the prices of the first transistors that were used for computers and follow the evolution of this cost in function of their extraordinary advance over the years, you will realize that it is kind of naive to complain for the cost of DNA data storage without really giving it a chance. Besides, biological technologies already experience a great advance and a very rapid progress, and we strongly believe that the more they will be used and studied, the more the cost will be reduced. Every time I discuss with people about this subject, they tend to get very excited at first. But when it comes to discussing about the cost, all this excitement goes away. I sometimes face reactions such as, no, this is too expensive, why should we use this? Or even people asking, do you really believe that this technology will ever compare to the conventional solutions that are so easy and efficient in terms of access time? Why should we use DNA? So, let me answer to all those questions by coming back to that image that we hypothetically stored into DNA a while ago. As I said in the beginning of my talk, every day we generate an amount of digital data which is equivalent to 10,000 billion photos, such as this one. All this information is then being stored into hard drives. But we will not need only one of those. We will need thousands. And as all the data gets multiplied day by day, we finally end up here. This is the solution that we are currently using. More precisely, in 2012, there were only 500,000 data centers to handle global traffic, while today, there are more than 8 million. Data center researchers estimate that the energy usage of data centers continues to double every four years. Every year, millions of data centers are purging metric tons of hardware, draining country-sized amounts of electricity, and generating carbon dioxide emissions as much as the global airline industry. Several models even predict that the electricity usage of data centers will reach 10% of the global electricity supply by 2030 if it is left unchecked. So, my question is, are we really going to continue like this, discussing about cost? What is the cost of thousands of forests burning? What is the cost of destroying the flora and the fauna of our world, or polluting the air that we breathe? Are we really going to discuss about cost? For the moment, there exist only a few pioneering works on the topic, ours being one of them. And we propose an eco-friendly solution that could flourish if more people were willing to explore it and satisfy their curiosity. And if you think that this is just some crazy idea, far from reality, that belongs maybe too far in the future, I must say that all those great technological breakthroughs that humanity is nowadays proud of started by just some people who had some crazy idea. This is our easy and convenient solution for the moment. And this is the solution that we propose. You can't see it? <laughs> well, this is exactly my point. A single pixel on this slide is equivalent to one single gram of DNA. This is the amount of DNA that is needed for storing all the data of a data center. 
Let's face it. We are living in a digital world that works like a frantic race. It cannot be sustainable. So, I believe that this is our winning solution. I believe that storing this 80% of cold data into DNA can revolutionize our future. And we must not forget, most of the data that we store is our memories. It's an essential part of our lives and our culture that we shouldn't negotiate with. For if we lose it, we lose a part of ourselves. And without our memories, how can we fight for a brighter future? How can we dream for a better world for tomorrow? Thank you. Thank you.